Hebrews 12:25. He says something very prophetic. He says, make sure. See that you don't refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, who met, he meant Jesus, much more shall we not escape it if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And we've heard this multiple times. Now this once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. This shaking is to uncover the evil and also expose deals made in darkness. It's going to be exposed by the shining of his light in all areas. His light will shine in the political, judicial, education, law enforcement, medical, pharmaceutical, and all kinds of areas where there are seats and positions of authority that control nations, countries, and counties, and states that have authority. And they will replace every seat of position held by darkness with his light and with his truth. That's the purpose of the shaking. Amen? It's to expose and remove. Everyone say expose and remove. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Again, what is the shaking for? To expose and to remove. In verse 1, now the what? Spirit expressly says that in a later time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Deceiving spirits, false doctrines of demonic influence, will spread rapidly. It's is going to take many people captives. They are being taken captives because of their ignorance, their lack of truth. They're being ta taken captives in their minds by mind-controlling spirits because they're proudful, they're gullible, they're rebellious, and they're rebellious to the laws of God. They'll be taken captive in their minds so that the enemy can establish their agenda and enslave them. And he's trying to slave all of God's creative humanity. Men, in other words, put them asleep. When a person is enslaved, they're asleep. They're actually sleepwalking. Many have fallen asleep in this area. They've fallen asleep into their own delusions. This is one of the powers of the enemy. This is where we stand. This is a global thing that's happening. That's why you see all kinds of stuff going on. In Ephesians chapter 5, and verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither what? Filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with these empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. 
For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Expose them. Too many people still pet evil. They compromise. They still associate. Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. So light is going to be exposing. And it's our responsibility as children of light to expose, not to cover. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We're to have no fellowship with unfruitful works of individuals that are not shining lights of Christ. Amen? We're to be witnesses to them. How can we be a witness to them if we prove what they do? That's pretty dumb. 2 Corinthians 6. The word warns us many will have a form of godliness. But they won't be right with God. 2 Corinthians 6.14. So he tells us something very important. He says, look, don't, don't be unequally equally yoked together with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what co uh, communion has light with darkness? Is deception darkness? Yeah. So if somebody's in, proclaiming to be a believer but is deceived, are they in darkness or light? Darkness. He says, so what, and he says then, he goes, and what accord has Christ with Belial? Because he says they're under the control of Belial, whether they believe it or not. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Remember, believe means to follow in all character of Christ. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God, and they shall be my people if they do something. Again, he said he's going to walk with you. He'll be your God. He'll dwell with you. You'll be, he'll be a father to us. We'll be his children if we do something. And that is to come away from individuals and regimes according to this antichrist regime. He said, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Does everybody get it? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Until we agree and submit, because the word says submit to God, resist the devil. Amen. Until you submit to all the things that the Spirit is asking you to do, you cannot resist the influence of the enemy. I don't care how many teachings you go to. I don't care how many churches you go to. I don't care how much prayer you do. I don't care how much worship you do. You won't be free until you obey. Does everybody get it? That's why people fall. That's why people are oppressed. That's why people are still emotionally attached. Not free. See, they're still living a life of management, not freedom. Does everybody get this? And this is the ploy of the enemy. This is what he loves to do. Keeps us in bondage. He said, come out of Babylon, the world system, and the approval of the rebellious regimes and individual. Because now is the time. Because things are getting ready to happen. And people are going to get snared or miss the opportunities that God's getting ready to release. In Romans 1. And there's something the word says, says, seek the face of Jesus. In other words, those who set their focus on the Lord live in peace. Amen? If you're focusing on heavenly bound things, if you're focusing on what God wants, if you're focusing on the Lord, 
you won't miss opportunities from God. But the moment you begin to focus on yourself, does everybody get it? You'll miss the opportunity of God. Does everybody understand it? See, because when you focus on the Lord, you see it all. God, there's nothing hidden from the Lord. He sees it all. Amen? He knows it all. In verse 18, let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all on what? Godliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested, manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. So they knew the truth, but they refused to accept it. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and in their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. So you see a big switch. The wrath of, the wrath of God. The wrath of God is called vengeance. Everyone say vengeance. Vengeance of our God is at hand. The vengeance of our God is at hand. Believe it or not, for some of us that might know, might not know, according to the true calendar, today is the Feast of Pentecost. Today is the true Feast of Pentecost, where God is pouring out His Spirit. Today celebrates the Feast of Pentecost, and it is the beginning or the marking of the new era today that we are entering. Today is the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is the beginning of the new era of the awakening and judgment. So you're about to see things begin to escalate. This is the beginning. Today is the beginning of the vengeance of our God. Today is the beginning. It's the day of Pentecost. That means God's going to start to pour out. So we're going to see things begin to happen. Remember I shared with you that I saw an earthquake, which was going, the Lord said, when you see the earthquake tsunami, it's going to happen somewhere in the world. It'll be known. It'll be televised something. There'll be like an earthquake tsunami. He said, but that tsunami will be my glory released to the world. That will be the beginning. So we know now today is the feast of Pentecost because God always associates and connects himself with times and seasons and events with the feast. So day is the beginning. Things are going to start to escalate. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy 3 in verse 10. He said, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Icium, and Lystra, which persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. So is God going to deliver you out of all your persecutions and all your troubles? Yes, if you let him. Amen. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. People will talk about you. All kinds of things are going to happen. You know. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So we know things are going to escalate. Deception will escalate. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every 
good work. We're to be thoroughly equipped to overcome any attack. We have no excuse. And to come out of all of the situations and the entanglements associated with the Babylon system. We have no excuse. It's just a matter of choice, isn't it? Second Peter 2, verse 18. He says, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Hallelujah, that sounds like most of the political system. For, for by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if they after have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter and is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and so having washed her wallowing in the mire. Well, we will see that there's false prophets and pro false promises of freedom, <laughs> bringing people into the lies and of captivity all over the world. It's getting worse. Like I said, many are going to sleep. There are many who are being awakened. People usually don't awaken unless it's chaos. And Daniel chapter 2. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. In other words, he's the holder of all time and season. He can alter and change and do whatever he wants, but everything that he associates with is associated in through his feasts to release something during a time or during a season. He removes kings and rises up kings. Hallelujah. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who are, have understanding. He reveals the deep secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you pray and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me the wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us what is the king's demand or the king's desire. Times and seasons, again, are held in the hand of God for his purpose. <clears throat> for to release something that he has predestined. It is to, but he, 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 he's made known to us the king's desires and requests or in other words, in preparation of his movements. There's something that God does before he does. He tells his prophets. Go to Amos 3, in verse 7. Let's speak it together. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the what? The prophets. A lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy? So God reveals everything through his prophets first, then releases. So there are mighty prophets that are being raised up. There are prophets of, that are gone home that are well known that their prophecies are being fulfilled. Is everybody with me? Amen? So, God does nothing until he reveals something to his prophets. Then the releasing comes from their mouth to release a prophetic release. Now, in Luke 21, verse 10, Jesus was known as a prophet. Amen. He's not only the son of God and God, but he was a prophet, a king, 
so forth. Remember when Jesus came, he spoke all kinds. His words were carriers. They were prophetic carriers. They were, his words were life. And in verse 10, he said something powerful. He said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilence and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay hands on you. They will persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers of, for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or to resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives, friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated for all my, for by my sake, my name's sake, but not a hair of your head shall be lost. Well, I got a little problem with that one, but anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. But your patience possesses your souls. And when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be what? Fulfilled. All things may be fulfilled. Earthquakes, visions. Again, I, I share with you again, I had this vision of the tsunami, but that earthquake that created the tsunami way deep in the ocean, that wave that came was not a wave of water. It was a wave of glory. But it had that wave of glory also. Let me tell you, people who are not right in God's glory get damaged. Some die. And I don't know if you remember in, in the scriptures when some of when the, the ark, when they were moving the ark, somebody touched the ark without going through a process of cleansing, they died. People trying to touch God's glory, what does the word say? Taking communion with an unworthy heart, unforgiveness and bitterness, you can become sick and die. Why? Because you're touching something holy. Hallelujah. I'm surprised there are any more dead people in the church, to be honest with you. Anyways, <laughs> pass around commuting half the congregation. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Glory to God. Psalm 43, verse 1. Let's speak it. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? You know, many people are oppressed because of what they see is going on. They feel like they've, there's no victory. There's no end to what's happening. But Jesus is bringing it to an end. Oh, send your what? Your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. He's crying out, vindicate me. You know, the body of Christ is crying out, vindicate me all over the world. Vindicate us, Lord, for what's going on. Rescue all those who've been deceived, being killed by. Rescue those who've been abducted and, and persecuted, who are in prison for telling the truth. Rescue them. Rescue them. It's a global cry from the body of Christ. And God is saying, I'm going to send my light and truth. I'm going to vindicate. And I'm starting on Pentecost, a new era. I will vindicate my church, my people. Go to Isaiah 61. I'm 
another prophet that spoke. He talked about Jesus. And he talked about his offspring. In verse 1 it says what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty or freedom to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound or who have been abducted. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called what? Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. It says here that they will rebuild the old ruins. In other words, they're going to restore, they're going to rebuild what the enemy has corrupted. Now, there's a couple things I want to share with you because the day of vengeance is today's teaching, and it's because there's a prophetic time in sequence right now. I don't know if I've ever heard of a prophet named Kim Clement, but he prophesied about Trump becoming president, everything. He's home with the Lord right now. And they've been reviewing some of his prophecies, and I've been watching some of these, and it's been phenomenal of the time sequence. Number eight means new beginning. It's a prophetic number, which means a new beginning. Number seven means complete, means perfect. But number eight means new beginning. So I want to share with you something very powerful. In June, okay, 18th, 2014. June, 18th, 2014, right? So if it's 2014, today is eight years later. Today it's, it's 2020, isn't it? 20, amen? Eight years later. It was prophesied, Kim Clement prophesied that God will fulfill the scripture of Isaiah 61 called the day of God's vengeance. He said it would happen. He said that many things would be exposed. He said that he would reveal his servant that would move like King David. That day he prophesied was Donald Trump's birthday. No coincidence. Eight years ago. <laughs> Donald Trump's birthday right on that day as the president. Is that wild or what? We are entering now, so we see the June 12th, Pentecost, amen? June 18th, a fulfillment of the day of the Lord's vengeance, the beginning. Why? Because it had to start with a feast, the feast of Pentecost, fulfillment of day's ven God's vengeance beginning. Then we see that he was prophesying about the summer, about the seasons. And he said that the sum, this summer, June 21st, is what they call a uh, Celsius summer. It's the beginning. On June 21st, it's the beginning of the summer. It is the lightest day of the year. It is the maximum light of that day. And eight years ago, it was prophesied that that summer Celsius would reveal the deception and the deals in darkness. They would be exposed. And it would create a new era. All of these were prophesied eight years ago and are being fulfilled starting today. Now this is phenomenal. Summertime of June begins the uncovering with every evil exposure and deals done in darkness. It's the process of uncovering. We will see more rest. We will see more things being taken down and all kinds of stuff. There's something else that he said, we'll enter a very strange July. 
we'll enter a hypnotic no November, and we'll enter a happy Christmas. Why? Because by then, things are going to be exposed tremendously. Each season is to release resources to rebuild by light and truth for 2022. This is the year we're in. Amen? We are, uh, the 50-year jubilee ends in September. September 22nd. Fall begins. Now we know that now we're getting close to the Feast of Trumpets in September. We'll see the releasing of a great fall of wickedness. The fall will create the fall. In fall, there'll be a tremendous fall. This is in September. From that fall, that fall will continue in such a phenomenal way, all the exposure and everything else. <laughs> that will be hypnotic in November because it'll be like, wow. People will be in awe. And December will create joy because we're going to be blessed. Everything will be turned over. Things will change. The stock market will crash in September. It has to crash. The cycle has to crash. The stock market has to crash. Why? Because it must be under Biden's watch. And then Trump will come and restore. Is everybody okay? All of these were prophesied eight years ago and are now coming to pass now. It's starting. We're in it. It's the beginning. And you're going to see all kinds of stuff happening this year. It's phenomenal. But again, that shaking is going to continue. That shaking will continue. You've got to be on solid ground. You've got to be standing strong. You've got to get your eyes off yourself. Shut all the doors that the enemy has access to you. Amen? And watch your tongue, because that's the number one key to an open door. Like I said, the best thing to do is tie it in a bow, make it, you know, direct, decorative, you know. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearance and his kingdom. Remember, the Lord's going to come through the body before he comes here. Amen? He's going to come through the body. That's revival. That's glory. So he's cleaning up. That song is no coincidence. It's come out. We are your people. He's kicking over tables. We are your temple. Amen? He says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. People are going to think you're nuts. They already probably think you're nuts. It's okay. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your calling or your ministry. Your purpose and your destiny. I'm going to close at Revelation 19. I was at an event last night we had gotten invited to, and it was just a, it was a, uh, a meeting and greet to uh, three politicians that were running for office. Sweet men. And it was just a blessing to hear their testimony and how they love Jesus. And, and, and they're all, all of them were ex-military. And how they want to remove the darkness of, of, of all of this corruption and evil, especially our, our mayor, Orange County mayor, who's an evil man, and people don't realize it. And the other one was voting, was, wants to be in the, uh, the head of the school's areas and get rid of all these doctrines in, in, uh, that are demonic and influencing sexual perversion. 
and another one was running for senator. Congress? Oh, okay. What's the difference anyway? <laughs> Anyways, we need to get people in the political arena because we've been lied to before. And people, the body of Christ slacked off and think they were, they, they, they believe the, the lie of the separation between church and state. Well, there is no separation. The church should have been involved in overrunning the state, <laughs> not separated from it. Amen? But praise God, God is turning things around. And we're in it now. In Revelation 19, verse 1, let's speak it. After these things, I heard a voice, loud, a loud voice of great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteousness are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her the blood of his saints she shed by her. Again, they said, Alleluia. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, of a sound of many waters, and the sound of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has been made, perf made herself what? Ready. Who's the wife? We are. Hallelujah. <laughs> and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your brother who has the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And the spirit of prophecy is being fulfilled. And you will hear prophets from all over now confirming the things that have been prophesied eight years ago to be completed and started now. We are in it. Don't be distracted. Don't be entangled. Amen. And keep your hands and your heart and your mind clean. Praise God. So, Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We thank you for it is the day of vengeance and the beginning of vindication. And we thank you for the rebuild of your kingdom on earth and the removal of the hidden darkness of evil that holds seats and positions globally to set the captives free in Jesus name and everybody said amen praise God